The Belmont Rapid Infuser RI2 is a self-contained fluid management system. Common applications include liver transplantation surgery, vascular surgery, transplant surgery, complicated obstetrical cases, aneurysm repairs, and trauma. In this series of videos, you will learn how to install, operate, and troubleshoot your Belmont Rapid Infuser RI2. Watch all the videos or navigate to the specific topics you're interested in. You can also find detailed information in your operator's manual as well as quick reference guides. The Belmont Rapid Infuser RI2 consists of two main components. The control system, which is mounted on an IV pole, and the disposable set. First, install the collar on the IV pole just beneath the system, no higher than 30 inches from the base of the IV pole. Mount the system above the collar by pushing down on the pole release handle. Check that the system is secure before proceeding. To remove the system, lift up on the pole release clamp while holding onto the top handle. This will prevent the system from falling. Install the small reservoir support approximately nine inches above the top of the system. The single patient use disposable comes pre-assembled in a sterile container and is color coded for easy installation. Begin by opening the disposable package and tightening the two lure locks. Open the door of the unit. Holding the heat exchanger in your left hand and reservoir chamber in your right, snap the reservoir chamber into the holder. Insert the heat exchanger with the red arrow pointing up. Align the red tubing on top of the red stripe and place the pressure chamber into the pressure channel. Press the infuse line into the secondary air detector to the left of the patient safety valve wand. Note, the infuse line should be at or below flush within the air detector. Place the thinner recirculation line to the right of the air detector and to the right of the valve wand. Next, fit the interlock block on top of the shelf. The blue arrow should be upright, pointing towards the ultrasonic air detector. The interlock block will be flush with the top of the machine. Thread the wider tubing over the center of the roller heads. Make sure that the larger tubing is in the groove of the wider blue line, and the smaller tubing is in the groove of the thinner blue line. Avoid stretching, kinking, and cross-threading the tubing. Finally, close and latch the door making certain the pump tubing is not caught. You are ready to power on the system. Press the power button firmly to the on position, which is located on the back of the device. After a brief self-test, operation instructions will be displayed on the screen. When first switched on, the screen will display instructions for installing the disposable set. Press next to move to the prime screen. You will now be instructed to connect fluid bags and unclamp lines. When ready, press prime to begin priming the disposable circuit. The roller pump will automatically prime the system in about 13 seconds. Fluid will be drawn through the tubing while the air will be directed out through the recirculation and vent line. During prime, the 100 milliliters to go will count down to zero. If the Belmont Rapid Infuser RI2 does not count down or resets back to 100 mLs, Confirm that there is enough fluid in the system and that the tubing is not kinked or stretched too tight. The next screen will prompt you to prime the patient line. Press the patient line prime key once to prime at 50 milliliters per minute or press and hold the prime key to prime at 200 milliliters per minute. Press stop after you have confirmed all air has been purged from the patient line. The system automatically enters a standby mode until you are ready to connect to the patient's catheter. Before continuing, please inspect and make certain that the patient line is completely primed and free of air. Any air bubbles after the patient safety valve wand must be removed prior to patient connection. Once the system is connected to the patient, press infuse to begin operation. Infusion will automatically start at 10 milliliters per minute. Infusion rate, set rate, total volume infused, temperature of the fluid, and line pressure are continuously displayed. The system should not be used to warm platelets, cryoprecipitates, or granulocyte suspensions. Lactated ringer solution, dextrose in water, 
and hypotonic sodium chloride solutions should not be added to blood components. Do not add solutions containing calcium or other additives that would compromise the anticoagulants in blood. Clots in the blood products may block the flow of fluid and cause overheating. Do not use the device if temperature probes or disposable set windows are wet, dirty, or blocked, as they can compromise the accuracy of the temperature probes and cause the unit to call for an increase of output temperature. Thoroughly clean the temperature probes and disposable set windows before each use. Do not use fluids stored in an overly high temperature fluid warming cabinet. The use of pre-warm fluids is not necessary. Pre-warm fluids that exceed the temperature limit will trigger an over-temperature alarm. In the event that the unit has displayed an overheat or over-temperature indication, discard and replace the disposable and blood product. Assure an optimal infusion site with sufficient flow capability and appropriate cannula bore size to avoid overpressure indication. Assure that bags have fluid in them. Press the up and down arrows to increase or decrease infusion rate. Press and hold to change the rate quickly. Fluid will be precisely warmed at all infusion rates. You could press the stop button at any time. Pressing the bolus key will deliver a specific volume of fluid. The volume delivered will be displayed on the lower half of the bolus key until the bolus operation is complete. Available bolus options are 100, 200, 400, 500, and 1000. To change the bolus settings, press stop and then press and hold the bolus key to scroll through the different values. When the desired bolus volume is displayed, simply release the bolus key. The default infusion rate is 200 milliliters per minute. To change the infusion rate, simply press the up arrow to increase the rate or the down arrow to decrease the rate. If you would like the bolus to be delivered at 500 milliliters per minute, press the bolus key and then press the 500 milliliters per minute rate key. Pressing the recirculation key will recirculate fluid through the reservoir and disposable circuit. This feature is used to warm and mix fluids and will automatically stop after five minutes. As fluids are warmed, gases are formed. The Belmont Rapid Infuser RI2 will trap these gases within the system and automatically purge them into the atmosphere. When this occurs, removing air will be briefly displayed on the screen and you may see bubbles escape through the recirculation or vent line. At the end of the procedure, be sure to disconnect from the patient and power down by turning off the power switch. The Belmont Wrap Infuser RI2 will alert the user with an audible alarm if it senses a problem and will display instructions for corrective measures. To silence the alarm and return to normal operation, simply follow the instructions on the display. Here are some troubleshooting tips for the alarms you might experience. A fluid out alarm will occur if the operator allows the system to run out of fluid. The Belmont will immediately stop infusion and automatically clamp off the patient line. Press mute to silence the alarm, add fluids, and press reprime. The system will automatically reprime in 13 seconds. If the fluid bags are not empty, check to make sure they are properly spiked, clamps are open, and the tubing is installed correctly. High amounts of particulates in the blood may clog the coarse blood filter in the reservoir chamber. Replace the reservoir chamber or disposable if it becomes clogged. The air detection alarm would be triggered if air is in the line, the secondary air detection sensor is not firmly seated, or if the air detector sensor is dirty. First open the door to silence the alarm. Squeeze the tubing directly below the air detector to clear any trapped air out of the sensor. Check the air detector and make sure that it is clean and the infuse line is properly seated inside the air detector. Finally, press reprime. The system will resume infusion when the repriming process is complete. Pressure control will display when the set rate is higher than the maximum allowable infusion rate. Infusion will continue during the pressure control alert, but will be automatically regulated within safe limits. To silence the alarm, press the set rate to match the actual rate. 
catheter length, patient placement, and non-high flow valves, caps, or extensions may all reduce the maximum achievable infusion rate. A high pressure alarm will sound if the patient line is occluded, the recirculation line is blocked, or the infusion site is not well placed. In this situation, you should inspect the patient and recirculation lines to make sure that the flow path is not blocked. Check to see that the catheter is not too small or too long, and ensure all tubing between the Belmont RI2 and the patient's catheter is able to support the selected infusion rate. The heating fault alarm will most often occur if the disposable set windows or infrared temperature probes are wet, dirty, or blocked. After cleaning and drying surfaces, press retry to continue. Hardware alarms include heater power readback fault and air detector fault. In these cases, power down the system and restart. If these hardware alarms persist, your machine will need servicing. The optional large volume reservoir can be added at the beginning or any time during the procedure. The LVR will hold up to three liters of fluid, has five fluid spikes, and can be added to the system in less than one minute. Disconnect the small reservoir by unscrewing the lure fitting on the recirculation line. If the small reservoir contains fluid, close the blue clamp to prevent a spill before disconnecting the fluid line. Disconnect the fluid line by pressing the quick release tab while separating the fluid tubing. To install the large volume reservoir, attach the large reservoir holder, unpack the reservoir, connect the fluid spikes, and place it in the holder. Attach the large volume reservoir by connecting the fluid line to the quick release connector. Connect and tighten the recirculate line with the lure fitting. The Belmont 3 Spike Disposable Set contains everything you need for a procedure and is the only consumable required to operate the Rapid Infuser at its full range of flow rates. The disposable set consists of three bag spikes, a heat exchanger, a 54 inch patient line, and a 120 milliliter coarse blood filter reservoir. Quick connections below the reservoir allow for easy and rapid replacement with the optional 3 liter reservoir. The three spike disposable can now be ordered in two convenient quantities of either 12 or six disposables per case. The three liter reservoir can accommodate up to five fluid bags at one time and is fully compatible with the standard three spike disposable set tubing and heat exchanger. The reservoir can be easily installed before or during a procedure in replacement of the standard 120 milliliter reservoir. The Belmont three liter disposable set offers the convenience of ordering the three liter reservoir heat exchanger set, and patient line in one simple kit. The Belmont 3 liter disposable set contains four reservoirs and four heat exchangers with patient lines per case. The Belmont dual patient line can be used in addition or replace the standard single 54 inch patient line with dual 54 inch lines, enabling connection to two patient delivery sites. The 54 inch Belmont patient line extension can be used to extend the standard patient line and is suitable for procedures that require longer connection to a delivery site. You can learn more about our devices and disposables by contacting your local sales representative or visiting us at www.belmontinstrument.com.